Hi everyone, in this video we're going to analyze the aerodynamics of a quadcopter and for that we're going to use the iconic DJI Phantom 3D model. It's a public 3D model, it's not the exact one, so it's just an approximation but it's good enough to show you the principles. We're going to run CFD simulations which is computational fluid dynamics and for that we are going to use the AirShaper platform. Let me show you how that's done. You simply drag and drop the file into AirShaper, it'll upload and once you click next it'll be converted for easy viewing in the browser. So once the model is uploaded you'll just see it in your browser and the cool thing is that you don't need to simplify the model or spend weeks of CAD repair. The platform is actually compatible with non-watertight and non-manifold models which means that you can have small gaps and holes through which the flow can theoretically leak to the inside, this will not crash the simulation. And the platform works with models with up to 10,000 components. So you don't need to necessarily simplify every small um, nut and bolt out of there. You can just give this one the correct position and put it above the ground. Uh, we can also do takeoff and landing simulations with ground effect and so on. In this case, we're just going to do the forward flight scenario. So you just put the drone in its reference position without any pitch, roll or yaw angle and then hit the set reference button. This position is now what will be used actually for the platform area calculation, which is then used for the uh, lift and drag coefficients. Once you've set that, you can actually give the forward tilt, for example, let's do 15 degrees angle of attack. And let's say this one is going at 50 kilometers per hour. I think the max speed is 70, so that should be fine. I set the units to meters and give it a scale of 0.5 because it's around 30 centimeters wide. Always check your dimensions below the viewer here. So the width is 0.32 meters, which sounds about right. Then what we can do is set the rotation of the propellers. If I select this propeller, it'll actually start rotating around an axis that the software will automatically detect. So you don't need to use any local coordinate system or anything. This is all just done in an automated way. Should the direction not be correct, you can just flip the direction of rotation. Uh, this is going in this direction. And the RPM is more or less or is around 12,000 RPM for this drone. So let's just finish this setup doing the other propellers as well. So this one should actually rotate in the opposite direction. This one can also be set up. Let's wait for the algorithm to pick it up. This is correct already. And then the last one can probably be switched as well. Yes, like this. And that's the only thing you need to do to set up your simulation. Of course, you may need to make an assumption about the combination of forward flight, angle of attack, RPM of the props and so on. And then based on the results, you can judge whether you actually need more thrust um, or if you need uh, um, or can do with a higher payload or anything based on the aerodynamic output. Once you hit the next button, you'll end up on the payment page. There are three accuracy levels to choose from. So the basic simulation is actually very coarse, but it's nevertheless useful for students and hobbyists just wanting, wanting to explore and compare very basic different concepts. It doesn't include rotating elements like propellers, so it's just to analyze the airframe to get a very coarse first estimate on the drag and lift properties. The regular simulation does include propeller functionality. The resolution is 10 times higher, and it comes with a full PDF report and even supports radiators for cooling if you want to add those as well. So the bulk of design work is done using the regular simulation. If you plan to head to the wind tunnel or you really want to um, find the last bits of performance and want to inspect very small details in the flow, then you can run the advanced simulation which will feature between 50 and 100 million cells and give you very precise insights. So once you launch the simulation, it'll actually be pushed to a dedicated server just for your simulation on high performance computing infrastructure with more than 100 CPUs to run your simulation and get results as fast as possible. A regular simulation is done within typically two to three hours and after that you can get the visualizations in your viewer to help you understand what the aerodynamics are like and how you can actually improve your workflow and your performance. Let's have a look at that. So once your simulation has finished, this is what you'll see. So in your browser, you'll be able to check the total pressure coefficient, isosurface, 
This is a technical term just to denote that um, these red clouds are the areas in which you're actually generating drag, losing energy. Obviously, the propellers are causing a lot of energy loss. Of course, they provide the thrust that you need, but they're also quite inefficient uh, in some cases and generating noise and turbulence. You'll also see that the landing gear is actually dragging itself through the air along with the camera, along with the support base and so on. Uh, and this is actually generating drag as well. You'll see that small slots like these, which might be necessary to get some airflow inside for your cooling, but they're also generating drag. So optimizing these is actually also quite important to limit the effect on drag lift and perhaps also stability of your drone. If you then look at the surface pressure map, um, you'll be able to see that the propellers have a high pressure um, at the bottom of their blades, which is the, the pressure side, and at the suction side at the top, it's low pressure, and this is what generates the thrust on the propellers. On the drone surface itself, you'll see that below the propellers, you can actually see the effect of the downwash, generating surface pressure on the support elements that actually lead up to the propellers. That's quite interesting to see. So keeping these narrow might actually help uh, to reduce the drag that you have in the wake of your propellers. But of course you need a certain uh, strength, so you'll need some cross-section there. Then what we also see is that as the drone actually moves forward through the air, the, the air actually curves around these support elements. And as air curves around support elements, it speeds up and this generates a low pressure area here um, on this part of the drone. If you look at the surface friction, you'll see that as the drone moves forward, you get high surface friction on the surface. And wherever you have separated airflow, like behind this area here, which is separated airflow, um, you'll see low surface friction values um, appearing on the surface there. And then you have some reattachment of the flow, partially um, induced or by the downward thrust or downwash of the propellers. So they really force air uh, to stick to the surface here, but then at the bottom, of course, you'll have flow separation in the wake of its own support arm. So that's quite interesting to see. Um, if you look at the streamlines, you can actually move the streamlines left and right, just to understand how the air gets picked up by the propellers and is being pushed downward, as you can see, starts here and then gets pushed downward. Um, if you then move it to the sides, to the center, for example, you can see how it curves nicely around the bodywork of the drone and hits the camera as well. You can do the same with the horizontal streamlines, which is a bit more dramatic. You can really see how the air gets um, spit out at the bottom side of the propeller uh, if you move these up and down. So really interesting to see also the speed up there. We have a rough indication of wind noise and drones are, well, usually quite dramatic in terms of wind noise generation. If you want different scales, we'll get to that in a bit um, on how to do that in Paraview. If you have set up um, propellers, maybe just short no uh, note on the noise for before we continue. So the noise, um, this is a rough indication of the wind noise. It's not a full acoustic simulation. For that, you will need a transient simulation with a lot of resolution. These simulations are steady state K Omega RANS simulations. So the noise prediction is based on an acoustic analogy, which is a mathematical formula that translates the turbulent kinetic energy into noise energy. So it'll not give you precise insights, but it will show you where the biggest sources of noise are located. And very obviously, this would be the set of propellers in this case, but also the landing gears causing drag and adding uh, to the noise. Then, if you set up propellers in your simulation, you'll afterwards be able to click each individual propeller and analyze its performance. Now, if you really want to dive deep into propeller performance, we do recommend that you run an isolated propeller, propeller simulation to really zoom in and focus all of the resolution on the propeller. Nevertheless, in the full drone simulation, you still get a reasonable estimate of the performance figures. For example, the torque, power and thrust values are indicated here. You can also check the coefficients, which use the advance ratio, which is the velocity along the axis of the drone, so the velocity of the drone itself, but then projected towards the axis of the propeller. That gives you the advance ratio. We calculate the thrust and power coefficients and also the efficiency of the propeller. Keep in mind, this is a public 3D model, so this is not a good propeller at all, but it does give you um, a good glimpse of what is possible with the simulation. 
Then we automatically split your model into separate components, which means that afterwards you can click on each element just to get the force on each individual part. If you want to know, for example, how much drag is caused by the camera, you can just click on the camera and then below the viewer you'll see the force on the camera itself, which is quite interesting. You'll also see that the propellers are generating a positive upward force and a negative drag, which is normal. There's a forward tilt, so the, uh, the drag is negative, so it's pulling the drone forward, which is normal. Then we also have the full simulation data. You, you can download this data and analyze the results in a pro program called Parview. It's an open source scientific viewer to generate visualizations like the ones that we have shown here. Only you can change the scales, uh, the color codes and anything you like as you will. There's a separate video on that. Just head over to the learning section and uh, find the video on Parview. And last but not least, we also have a full PDF report which details the simulation as well. So this report begins with an overview of all of the settings that were applied during the setup of the simulation. You see that you get around 11.6 million cells in this case, it'll always hover around 10 million. The frontal and planform area are calculated using that reference position that you set during the setup. And then the meshed model is actually shown. So this is not the original 3D model, this is the actual mesh of the CFD. So every detail you see here was actually included in the simulation. And it's very, very precise as you can see. A lot of details are captured, even these small louvers for the cooling of the drone. The reason for this is that every simulation at Airshaper first gets performed at half the resolution, so 5 million cells in this case, after which the flow field will be analyzed by the algorithm and based on the gradient of pressure, typically high around the propeller blades, and the vorticity, typically high in the wake, and, and the wake of propellers, wake of the drone, the mesh will re locally be refined only in those areas where it matters most. So when Airshaper applies a 10 million cell mesh, it really is equivalent to maybe 15 or 20 million cells of a non-adaptively refined mesh. So this really is a useful feature to adapt the mesh to your specific 3D model and get the best possible output. Then we move to the forces page where you can see the drag force and the lift force and the lateral force if you have any. Um, and we make a distinction between the pressure force and the friction force. And this is also quite important, we do provide an overview with the pitch, roll and yaw moments which are important for the stability analysis of the drone. So Airshaper can support you with static deri uh, stability derivatives as well as dynamic stability derivatives uh, by rotating the entire drone. This curve indicates the convergence, so we wait until the drone simulation has converged and after it has converged we continue the simulation for a number of iterations, also dynamically determined this number of iterations, until the averaged value has actually reached a reliable value which doesn't oscillate too much anymore. So all of the values and the visualizations you see are based on the averaged flow results. Then you'll see the drag coefficient, so this is quite interesting, it's negative. This means that the thrust of the propellers is slightly higher in the wind direction um, than the drag on the drone itself. So this means either you need slightly less forward pitch or you need a slightly lower RPM uh, to still be able to go at this speed. So that's quite interesting to start optimizing. There is an indication of the power which is required to fly at this speed, but this is only for the full drag, this is not for the, um, for the propellers themselves. For that you just need to use the propeller functionality that we showed before. And again, this is negative because there's actually a bit too much thrust on the propellers. That's quite interesting. Then we show all of the visualizations which we also discussed online, so this is just useful as a reference. There's one extra here which is a section of the velocity and the pressure through the center of the drone in the horizontal and vertical plane. So that was it for this video on the aerodynamics of a quadcopter. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. If you want, there's also a link to the public sample project that we generated so you can check out the 3D results yourself in your browser. And if you want to discuss your own project, just drop a comment or get in touch with us at info at airshaper.com. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.